Hey guys, it's Archie Luxury, and today, guys, I want to introduce a new product. A new product. It's called Ulo. Now, what is Ulo? It's a digital business cards social platform that helps consumers and businesses get connected. It helps promote products and services all within a single professional network. Now, Ulo was designed and built by the best. It's built by ex Pebble engineers who pioneered in the smartwatch market. And um, they raised funds via a Kickstarter project. If you struggle to stay in touch with your customers, Ulo solves such problems by collecting your contacts, enabling payments, and maintaining the conversations all within a single professional network. Guys, click on the QR code, take a look yourself, Ulo, Ulo, that's right guys, Ulo, check it out. I'm Archie Luxury, I'm gonna give it a try myself. Hi guys, it's Archie Luxury on the Paul Pruder channel. Today I'm doing paid review, 23 QA19, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my bluesy. Okay, let's jump straight in. This is a long paid review for Jay. G'day, Archie Luxury. My name is uh, he says his name just refer to me as Jay. I'm in Los, An Los Angeles. I've been a long time watcher of watch YouTube of your. I've been a long time watcher of watch YouTube videos and felt mortified when I heard about the terrible news of your watch theft. Those who invade our homes for personal gain deserve to spend the rest of, of their lives in prison. But our societies don't respond with appropriate punishment for these scumbags. I'm normally very private about my watches. I don't like to attract unneeded attention. But I would love to support your channel. And I've sent you 100 US for a long paid watch review. I'd appreciate your review uh, and your thoughts. My watches, like me, tend to be less flashy and reflect my love of things mechanical. And often that means something outside the mainstream. I love a good watch movement, mechanical complexity, superb craftsmanship and execution. And also want watches that will maintain value so that naturally has led me to Paddock and Lange as my favorite watch brands. If I am to collect more, I am going to favor though, more of those as well as Vacheron. Some of my other watches are in my collection because I got them at fantastic prices or, or more out of whimsy here's the collection let's begin so we're starting this collection review we've got an Amiga Seamaster steel 34 mil it's 1950s automatic bumper movement this is the oldest watch in the collection and has classic good looks that will never go out of style now what I'm gonna do is, is just give a bit of a comment on each of these here Yes, look, it's a classic watch. I don't know if you need this watch because you've got such amazing pieces. But, hey, if you like it, why not? Number two, Paddock 5205G, white gold, blue gradient dial, 40 mil, aftermarket sailcloth strap to give it a more youthful look. I think this is just the most gorgeous modern Paddock combining sector dial symmetry and natural and practical annual calendar functionality with wear, everyday automatic simplicity. And I've got to tell you, I've got to agree, this is one of the most beautiful modern annual calendars that Patek has out there. Uh, the sister watch to this, the 5905, which is the um, annual calendar chronograph, very similar, but in the same token, I think the 5205 is just gorgeous. Number three, we've got a Patek 5026 Platinum Calatrava Black Millennium Edition. It's 33 mil. Small size. Normal size of this classical dress watch holds it back from greater collectability, but I think it's awesome and traditional and one of the cleanest dials of a Calatrava that Patek has released prior, uh, or hence making it very collection worthy. It's got the beautiful 240 PS micro rotor movement, which I know you are familiar with because it's the base caliber of many, for many, a fine Patek complication, such as the World Time, 
uh, that you once had. May those thieves get their justice someday. Yes, I gotta say, this is just a gorgeous little platinum piece. 33 mil does make it a little bit smaller in today's standard, but it's still a classic, beautiful dress watch. Then he's got a Lange, Lange 1, 101.030, white gold, distinct grey dial, 38.5 mil. Uh, this was my first Lange watch and I just wanted anything Lange of any discreet offering and was lucky to land this one. As luck would have it, the grey dial is a highly sought after colour as it is sort of the brand's colour feature on all their boutiques and boxes and signs. I was either going to get this or the Glass Hood Original. I don't regret my decision. I've got to tell you, I love 38.5 mil because it's such a, the way the case and that is done, it actually wears bigger. So I think the sizing is really good, really good. Then we've got a Lange 1815 chronograph. 414.026 white gold boutique edition blue silver dial 39.5 mils Lange makes the most beautiful chronograph movement of all time and so I wanted it in the slimmest possible option the 1815 chrono with the most beautiful and hardest to get dial of them all I love it and could click the pushes all the time for fun this is the most beautiful watch movement I've ever owned and might be till the very end. I've got to tell you, the 1815 chronograph. I had a friend, Ronnie, from Vintage Watch Co. He actually had a Lange, was it white? I think it was, do you have a rose? I think he had a rose one. Absolutely stunning. His business partner had a white gold one. The pushes, it's actually, this. it's like a hot knife through butter. Amazing, amazing. Then he's got a Lange number six, Lange one Daymatic, uh, 320.025, platinum 39.5 mil silver dial. I wasn't getting enough wear of my manual wind Lange one, so I thought maybe by adding a beautiful automatic Lange one to the collection would increase my wrist time. It has uh, somewhat, and I do love the repurposing of the power reserve needle to a day of the week indicator. The mirror inverse dial layer also gives me a kick and I can just stare at this beautiful 21 carat and platinum engraved rotor all day. Lange doesn't do many automatics, but when they do, they do it right. So that's the, the Lange One Daymatic. Beautiful, beautiful. How could you not love this here? Then we've got a Vacheron, Vacheron Patrimony Grand Tourley. 85180 rose gold 40 mil manual uh 8.5 mil thin but looks even thinner i needed a proper rose gold dress watch for those fancy occasions and you can't get much finer than this traditional example of the fine genevan watchmaker um modernized only by its modern diameter this is pure class and it makes me feel like class two whenever I wear it with a suit and brown press Oxford brown dress Oxfords patrimony grand tolly beautiful 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 watch absolutely beautiful number eight Ulysses Narden San Marco GMT this is rose gold 40 mil automatic big day pusher adjust travel time there is no finer travel watch than this Truly simple hour hand adjustment via pushes and automatic winding make this reliable take anywhere travel in style wrist candy. Custom blue alligator strap mounts on the factory rose gold Ulysses Narden deployant. Yes, not a big fan of Ulysses Narden, but hey, hey, we'll let you sneak it in. Number nine, Dracket Droz, grand second, white gold, 43 mil. Gray and ivory dial, uh, these aren't known for retaining value particularly well, but I love the unique grand second time display and got this one used at a good price. I hope so. These are kind of terminal buggers. They're kind of terminal buggers, and I've never been a big fan. I'm sorry, I never liked them, never liked them. 
Number 10, Dracut Droz Grand Second Reserve Dimash Black Ceramic 44mm Automatic and Power Reserve. I managed to get serial number one of this limited edition and scratch proof version of the Grand Second. So I wanted a sporty and under the radar watch. So here it is. This may be my worst purchase from a watch financial perspective. But I remember the feeling of joy I got when I found this as an authorized dealer during a Vegas trip and saw it was lucky number one. Yes, I bet you he was lucky to sell that bastard as well. Number 11, Bell & Ross Vintage 123 40mm PVD. I got this watch at a great price as a souvenir during one of my travels and because it imparted to me a spirit of adventure. Super legible, round aviation dial, readout loomed without any boxy B&R look and was cheap enough that I could take it anywhere and not worry about it getting stolen or damaged. Yeah, I don't know if you need this. You don't need that. I'd be pissing that off. That's what I would be doing. Then we've got a Omega Speedmaster triple calendar blue dial 3523.80.0039 mil. This was my first luxury watch that I got at the age of 23 when my grandfather said he'd buy me a nice watch of my choice. I wanted something versatile and durable and was very special to me at the time. It's now on the cheaper end of the watch collection, but I'll never let this go. What a great story. Then number 13 is a Rolex Daytona 116509 white gold meteorite dial. This is my personal favorite Daytona of all time. If you ignore price, it's got the heft of gold and the subtle look of steel, a mesmerizing meteorite dial and the pops of red color. Yes, I like red. I cannot criticize a white gold Daytona meteorite dial. Definitely not. Then we've got number 14, a Rolex 16264 Turnograph, early 2000s, 36 mil rhodium, Roman rhodium dial, steel oyster band with white gold bezel. This was my first Rolex watch. It's a workhorse. It's never skipped a beat and feels oh so comfortable on the wrist. The Roman numeral rhodium dial with the white gold bezel look. The classiest discreet Rolex date just available at a time and I think remains one of the best of all time. Yes, the Turnograph. I love these. They also can call them the Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds are go. Yes, this is like a date just with a rotating bezel. Absolutely amazing. Good purchase. Blank Pain 50 Fabens Trilogy Collection GMT 40 mil steel 300 meters depth, ra depth rating. Every serious collection needs at least one dive watch. I wanted mine to be functional GMT. Durable, historical significance, robust. It's taken a beating on my adventures and wearable in size. Sorry, 45 mil current. 50 fathoms with your gorgeous sapphire cap bezel. This bezel has a quality click to it and I love turning it. Loom is fantastic also since it's a 50 fathom. So there you go guys, the blank pane. I don't mind it. Not in love. I like to have my divers simple, just simple divers, but hey, that's okay. 16 Gerald Gentra Retro Solo Steel Carbon uh, fiber S dial, jump hour, retrograde minutes that look like a speedometer. This watch is fun and attracts attention from everyone for its avant-garde ways. 17, Omega Moon Swatch Uranus. There we go. Moon, sorry, I should say Moon Swatch Uranus. Well, it was cheap and I replaced the horrible factory Velcro with a white leather strap. 18, Moon Swatch Sun. Well, it was cheap and I replaced the horrible Velcro with a grey NATO strap with fake gold accents. 19, Casio Oceanus OCWT200S. Uh, it's a $400 watch. That's not even... Oh, well, oh, oh, oh okay. Let's, let's go. 41 mil green emerald dial, solar, radio control, Bluetooth, automatic time setting. This may just be the best all-round watch value. 100 meter water resistant, always displays the right time down to the second, easily 
time sinks during travel, recharges itself, is beautiful to look at and is the best quality construction I've seen in a watch for near its $400 price point. It's seriously close to Grand Seiko in quality. Uh, the quality of the bracelet and the case, oh, seriously close to Grand Seiko and quality of the bracelet and case polishing. I don't know about that, please. And number 20, Grand Seiko SBGA413, Shanban Spring Cherry Blossom Dial, 40 mil titanium spring drive movement. If I had to have only one Grand Seiko, it would be the spring drive, and it would have to have a beautiful dial that looked like silver, meteorite, or pink cherry blossom, depending on the lighting. Viola, here it is. It wasn't a tough choice for me to make. Thanks, Paul, and I hope you have a great day and rebuild your collection in time. Okay, let's have a look what we would do with this collection. So let's go through these watches here. The vintage Omega, 34 mil steel. Check, that's okay, that's okay. Paddock, double check. We love the 5205G, that's beautiful. The Paddock 5026P, yes, give that a double tick, we like that. Lung A1. Uh, the 38.5 mil, double check that. The Lange 1815, we're going to triple check that. That is a super duper watch. The Lang, Lange 1 Daymatic, two ticks. Basher and Patrimony, two ticks. Ulysses Narden, uh, I'm going to put a question mark. Can you sell that off? Let's see if you can get rid of that. The Drac, Dracket, Droz, both of those, man, they got to go. They got to go, they got to go, they got to go, they got to go. The Bell and Ross, that's got to go. The Omega Speedmaster Triple Calendar, yes, one tick because it sent him, the story was good. Then we've got a white gold Daytona meteorite dial, yes, tick. Turnograph, tick. Blank pan, tick. Gerald Gentra, retro solo. What the hell is this? Oh, he's got a Gerald. Did I read that? Did I, I think I might have missed that. Gerald Gentra, Retro Solo Steel, oh, Carbonesque. Did I? I think I... Okay. Uh, uh, let's put a question mark on that. I'm not so keen on that. The Moon Swatch? God, no. There's Uranus and the Sun? No. The Casio? No. The Grand Seiko? A tick. So, let's have a look at your collection here. What would I do here? So... Let's have a look here. I like the collection. I love... I think there's certain pieces you can get rid of. Paddocks you keep. The Lung A's you keep. Ulysses Narden, no. You've got some stuff that I would really get rid of. It doesn't do anything for your collection. And I'd get a couple of Rolex. I'd get a couple of Rolex. But that's my opinion there. That's my opinion. I do like it. Uh, what would I add? You, you know what? Maybe you could add... No, I think you've got some beautiful pieces. I would just be, be thinning a few things off. That's all I would do there. Nice collection. It's a nice collection. Um, some of these things just don't add up. You know, the drag cut throws. Do you need that when you've got Lange and Paddocks and Vacheron? No, I don't think so. I'll let you keep the Ulysses Narden. We can save that. Call a friend. Uh, but i got to tell you, some of these lesser ones, just piss them off. That's what I would be doing, is pissing them off. Uh, the Bell and Ross, it can go. The Gerald Gentra, piss it off. The Uranus, the Sun, Moon Swatch, get rid of it. The Casio, the Casio should never be in this. It's just a, It's just a cheap... It's just a beta watch, okay? It doesn't belong. You've got Langays and Paddocks. So, I really do love this collection. It's beautiful. Nice pieces. What would I add there? I'd maybe consider adding some Breguet. You would need a Jager Le Coutre Reverso or two. Yes, sir, you do. That's what I would be adding. And uh, I got to tell you, those Paddocks and the Langays, my God, what? An amazing, what an amazing collection. I really love it. So, Breguet, I would think, you know, the, you know, the traditional, the Breguets with that exposed movement, that's the sort of beautiful stuff I would be throwing. So, 
There's a few suggestions there. I hope you're not offended by them. I'm just trying to give you my honest, earnest opinion. Jay, so well done. Beautiful. Got a superb collection. Absolutely superb. 20 piece. Just get rid of some of the lesser ones. And congratulations. Well done on such a beautiful collection. I am Archie Luxury. This has been a paid review. Please, guys, I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need more paid reviews. 50 US dollars for a review. Details in the description below. And I will see you in the next one. See you later. Hi, guys. It's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please, guys, save your dignity, keep some pride, go to David SW. I would highly recommend David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the YouTube sensation, the Paul Pluto channel. Guys, I need you to help me out, guys. I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need you to request a paid review. 50 US dollars, look down in the description. 50 US dollars, re I will review your collection. I'll tell you what I think of it and I'll give you some pointers. The other thing is, guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a couple bucks a month, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you want. And it keeps me going on YouTube because, guys, I'm in a niche. Nobody can make money out of the views I get. The views are crap because it's a small, specialized area. And I don't talk about garbage for the sake of views. Guys, sponsor me on Patreon. Look down below and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.